All right, guys, here we go. A couple more old K's about to get a shave. So recently I had a really great drummer, uh, yeah, fantastic drummer reach out, say he had a batch of cymbals he wanted to send in. And these are two of what he just recently sent in. And I'm going to document the process of modifying them. They are both old K's. Uh, they are both very, very different. I don't know the eras of these. I think this one looks like an intermediate stamp. But if you know more about this, please correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, looks like an intermediate stamp old K. And then this one, uh, only part of it took. And some of the lettering, it actually, to me, from the little bit of research that I've done... The little bit that I know, this might be one of the really, really old, old Ks. Uh, it almost seems like it was, you know, it's it's in the weight that's kind of where a marching symbol would be. It's 2790 grams and it's like barely over 19 and a half uh, inches, inches. So it's undersized for a 20, 2790 grams. Uh, the shape on it, it's kind of triangular. It doesn't really have that super umbrella-like thing it's a it's a little bit it's pretty smooth all the way out to the edge whereas this other one has a pretty big flange right here and it's flatter up top so anyone who might know about that stamp please comment below and help me identify this thing but it's also got some weird reddish amber brown kind of patina stuff going on i don't know if I'm going to leave this on, the plan is really to take the weight off from the underside uh, because I, I don't like removing these stamps. I want to keep these there as a signifier for, you know, what the symbol was, is, you know, especially since these have quite a bit of collector's value. So the weight removal is all going to happen from the underside. This drummer that sent me these likes really thin symbols. So this 2790 gram weight, I'm going to probably need to shave a thousand grams off this if possible. So uh, I'm really going to be taking this symbol down significantly. And just so that you can hear what it sounds like. It's just pingy. It's just loud. It's bright. Not great for jazz. This is a jazz drummer who sent these in. So uh, this is going to get a pretty massive facelift. Um, and over here we have a 22. Like I said, I think it's an intermediate stamp. It's got a pretty crude crack repair here. It's also got a crack right near the bell where it looks like something was dropped on it right there. So I'm going to be doing repairs on those. And then weight removal as well. So it's 22. It weighs 2,405 grams. Shape on it is pretty medium. Like I said, it's got a flange right here where it dives and then it kind of levels off. It's actually got a little bit of a dip and then another little dip right to the bell. So it does have areas that are prone to hums, but these hums aren't really, uh, aren't necessarily super prevalent. They, they do bl blend into the sound of the overall symbol. It's not a bad sounding symbol. If it were totally uncracked in great condition, this thing could garner a pretty high price, especially considering the weight range that it's in for 22. But let's check it out. Definitely got hums where it dips, right? So it flanges from here to the edge, but then it kind of dips and it has another peak here and then it dips to the bell. So in this area here, there's some hums. There's also definitely going to be hums around the crack because that crack is a disruption in the tension. And there's, you know, these, these two flaps here have the tendency to move more. So that's definitely going to be causing or, you know, possibly cause hums and tones whereas like over here where it's not cracked it might be a little tighter 
which is the case a little bit. So uh, one other note before I transition over to the lathe and show you guys the process is on this guy, I forgot to mention this, but uh, flipping it over. So we have the signature there and then we have the remnants of the paper uh, sticker. And if you could find old, old K's like this and they have the entire intact sticker, that's a, a super cool little Easter egg, cool little thing just to show how well it was preserved. So you could definitely make an argument that this thing should stay the way that it is. Uh, but I've told a lot, of, a lot of people who had problems with me modifying these things. I've just told them, you know, I, I don't really judge what people want to do with their property. I do have respect for these as instruments and as relics of a time gone by, but I'm willing to work on these if it means that they can be made into a uh, setup that will be used by the person that owns it. You know what I mean? I don't want these things. I'd much rather these things make music than just sit in a closet or sit in a glass display case. So there are plenty of old K's out there sitting in display cases or collecting dust in closets. So if I can have a tiny part in taking an instrument like this and turning it into something that a drummer will absolutely love, then that'll make me happy. So that's my little PSA about old Ks. Let's transition over to the lathe and start moving some weight. All right, so I don't know how much material I removed. I'd imagine a couple hundred grams at least. Uh, and you notice I started in the center where those uh, where those holes are. And the reason I did that was because I am using a very, very wide carbide uh, bar. And the, the width of it is allowing me not to go into the hole while I'm shaving over it. Um, what that does is if you have a sharp bit going into the hole, obviously you, you go in and you start to chatter. And even with my wide bit, there is some, some chatter. You can see right there around that hole there. Uh, there's a little bit of jumping that happens, but I want to minimize that as much as possible. You can see a little bit more of it there. Uh, I have chatter out near my edge a little bit, and I obviously have pretty much made a knife at the edge. Uh, you saw I spent a good amount of time here just tapering it. I'm trying to get a very good taper, but I still want to have enough uh, weight up near the center so that it it it, uh, it stays strong on the stick definition. I don't want this thing crazy washy. Um, I'm having a hard time with the idea of removing the signature, but uh, this bell is going to be very, very bright and pingy and piercing if I don't. Um, and the drummer has said that he wants me just to go ahead and clear the whole surface. So I'm going to reluctantly get rid of this and take the weight down on the bell just so we can get a little bit more tone coming through. Basically integrate the bell sound a little bit more than it is. One thing I did want to show you, when I turn the lathe on, just watch the bell itself and where it is in relation to my center bolt. So my center bolt is not totally perfect. Um, I have a little bit of run out there, but you can see the bell itself is kind of doing this very fast. So what that shows me obviously is that the bell is not uh, uniform and it's not centered. Basically the old K's were, were 
the bells were shaped with a sledgehammer. And so any little difference in how it was set up and put underneath the die would cause the bell to be pressed in oblong ways or out of shape ways. And, and that's very characteristic of old K's. So if you have an old K, your bell on that old K is probably not perfect. So it's one thing I wanted to note. I probably have quite a bit of weight removal to do on this symbol. And uh, I'm just going to be working this underside for ages, but we're on our way. All right, as it stands, I have now taken off over 500 grams. So it started out at 2790, we're now at 2240 grams, and we can already start to hear what's happening in this symbol and kind of the direction it's going, even though I'm probably gonna take off another 500 grams, but let's check it out. Starting to open up some life in there. See, see what's going on inside. It's, it's, it's nice. I'm liking it. Uh, there's some gong-like sounds, some kind of chimey sounds, which I think is just due to the fact that it's still pretty heavy. Uh, for a 19 and a half to be in 2200 gram range, I would say that's still medium heavy or heavy for a 19 and a half. But once we cross the threshold of 2000 grams, I think we're really going to start to hear what, what's going on with this symbol and, and what we can expect from the final result. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking this will turn out really nice, but what do you guys think? I'm probably not going to take much more weight off the bell. I might leave the bell as is and just keep taking weight off the, the body because uh, the bell still got a nice piercing tone but there's a little bit more life to it it's a little bit more open and then as we take the rest of the body down that pitch will go a little bit lower um, and then i might really come in at the very end and just do a little bit more if i need to integrate the bell a little bit but um, we're well on our way and here is the aftermath of all the weight removal i didn't show you all of it because it would have gotten boring but check it out all from the underside 1790 grams exactly a thousand grams removed i have quite a bit of chatter at the edge and a little bit of chatter around the holes but for the most part i was able to get the weight down uh relatively easy there's a little bit of chatter chatter at the base of the bell um and i did at the end these these sweeping passes uh Almost pin lathe like, but I didn't want to go. Of course, I didn't want to go over these uh, these rivet holes. So you kind of just work this section and then work this section. Uh, that can give a little bit more of a high end sparkle and shimmer. Uh, but yeah, so 1790 grams, all from the underside. And let's take a listen to how this thing sounds.
All right, so the last step on this symbol is going to be to do a little bit of burnishing. As you can see, the shape is a little bit out of whack. So as I'm putting a bunch of pressure underneath the symbol with that, I'm kind of loosening the stiffness of the symbol, and the symbol is now a little cockeyed, a little out of shape. In person, it's got a, wa a wave and a wobble to it. I don't want it to be stiff, because I want it to be nice and crashable, but the weight is really going to give me the crashability that I want. So what I'm going to do is go in and burnish. And I think, you know, I, I love the patina on top. I just don't love this red amber thing. So I, I think I'm going to do a little bit of abrasion treatment just to try to see if I can pull back that weird color and blend it. And then I'm going to burnish, which uh, burnishing, I'm just going to use a rounded metal object to basically put pressure in and that's going to help stiffen it back up ever so slightly. And then once it's had a day, a week, a month to rest, the molecules will kind of settle and then it'll open back up. So right now it's a little bit seized up, but it's also pretty loose. So we've got a nice crash, uh, but as it kind of loosens up, the molecules rest, relax. It might get even more wavy and kind of jellyfish-like at the edge, uh, which I don't want there to be so much wobble at the edge that it kind of muffles the stick definition and gets in the way. I want it to be nice and balanced. So I'm, let's pop it on the lathe, do the burnish, do the abrasion treatment, and then this thing will sit and rest and we'll revisit it later. All right, so now that this guy's done, we're down at 2260 grams. That's right around where I want it. I don't want to go too thin with it. Um, as you can see in the video, I had to go kind of gingerly over this area. I kind of took that area first just to try to get that down a little bit. Obviously, using still using my really wide bit. Uh, my wide carbide blade just so that I'm not putting a point down in that which can catch cause chatter all that um, And then I did a little bit of a taper towards the edge. I decided to leave the underside of the bell because It had the signature and the bell is in a nice balanced place, but let's take a listen to where this thing is at and We'll see if it needs any additional work I think that's great. I don't think I need to take a gram more off that. Uh, it's actually going to go down in weight when I repair this crack. I'm going to basically widen it. And then when I uh, drill out the crack, that's right next to the bell. So the reason why you don't want a sliver like this as a repair is because you've got a smaller point, uh, a smaller pivot point between the moving pieces of metal. So 
the smaller the point is, it's like if you can think of a V, if you had a V and you had two sides moving, obviously the most, uh, the most movement is, is, is congregating in the center of that V. So that V is where it's going to crack again. So same with things like this. If it's so small like that at either end, it's a tiny little hole that's drilled out to stop it. Um, that's just going to crack again very easily. And you can see it's pretty much right in the middle of a lathe groove. So that uh, could make it even easier to have it crack and continue on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to widen this hole, widen that hole, uh, probably about yay big. And then I'm going to cut this out in a, in a wider, uh, it's going to be a wider sliver all the way out. So it's, it's, it's dispersing how much movement can happen at the, the tension point, uh, thus creating the most robust repair that you can do, uh, especially given old bronze like this is brittle. This is going to be interesting. I don't quite know how I'm going to deal with this because of how close it is to the bell. I think what I'll do is pop a hole. Let's see if I can get it to focus. I'll pop, pop a hole lower so that I can have the hole be pretty much where my finger is and keep as much space between the center hole and my repair hole as possible. Obviously, I don't want it to be super close like that because that movement, again, uh, on a smaller point, more stress on a smaller surface area, that could cause it to crack and, and those holes could connect. So let's let this sit and we'll revisit it after I've done the repairs and after the other one has rested and then we'll finalize this modification. All right, so on to the repair. So you've seen I've widened these holes and I've traced out with my Dremel and a cutoff tool, I basically started to trace out where my cut is going to be. And I'm going to continue to go very, very slow and methodical through this until I can cut these out. And then I will use some grinding tools to smooth out the transitions. Like you see, I got a transition there. I'm going to have a transition into my hole. Uh, and then I'm going to pop these out and we'll have this, this oval sliver cut out. And that will be the repair on this. Uh, and then I'm going to go through and do what I said I was going to do to this, which is going to be to pop a hole lower where the um, crack is. And then when I extend the, the, the hole uh, bigger, I'll get it to where it basically covers where my finger is. And we'll have a solid quarter inch, a little bit more than a quarter of an inch of bronze between this hole and our center hole. So, All right, the mods are complete. On the smaller 19 and a half symbol, you can see I polished back some of that weird red. I added over some of my patina just to kind of help smooth out the finish. Um, but I really like how it's looking on top. It still has enough patina uh, to help retain a dry stick. I'm not getting too much wash or spread from the symbol, uh, which was really the original goal with keeping this patina on top is obviously to keep the, the stamp intact, but also to keep the beautiful patina that develops over many decades. So uh, the new weight on this guy is 1795 grams. So we came down almost exactly a thousand grams from the original weight. And let's check out how it sounds. So if we flip the thing over, see I put down, put in a little bit more of a patina on the underside just to kind of match the top and bottom a little bit. Uh, we have the weight all taken down from the underside. I did a little bit of burnishing. It had uh, over 24 hours. Actually, it had three days, three full days to rest. So this is pretty much sounding exactly like it's going to sound. And uh, you guys let me know what you think about this mod. Now for this guy. You can see the repairs are done. I got the sliver cut out. 
Uh, got that stuff polished so it's not sharp. Then the crack near the bell hole, you can see I had to get close, pretty close to this center hole, but I, I think there's enough material there. And even if it ends up cracking there because we have the two holes, it's not going to tend to crack outside of those holes just because these holes are big enough to take the vibration. Um, the new gram weight on this guy, it started out at 2405. The new gram weight is 2240 grams. So this is in the, in the target weight range that the drummer likes. And when you cut out the material here, that actually takes down a fair amount of weight as well. So let's take a listen to how this thing sounds. All right, so drop a comment below. What do you think about these modifications? Do you think they uh, were worth doing? Uh, which one do you like better of the two? Uh, like I said before, the main goal was to get these into a thin weight range for a jazz drummer that likes thin cymbals, but uh, overarchingly, the, the real important point to remember is that these things, I did not want to shave these so thin that they... Uh, that sacrifice the stick definition. You're always wanting to keep your stick definition, especially for jazz cymbals. If you're going thin, you still want to have a really nice sense of stick click and articulation from your rod. You really want your patterns to be able to be heard. And if, it, if you get a cymbal too thin and there's too much spread, too much wash, uh, that wash will kind of overtake that stick definition and you just end up with a really muddy cymbal that you can only play at super quiet volumes or in very specific venues. So that's a really important thing to think about with vintage cymbals, with really any kind of cymbal, is the weight range that you want it to live in. You want to make sure that it that it is also constructed in a way that provides the articulation you need so that your ride patterns can be heard over distance. You want it uh, you want them to translate so that you have a clear stick sound. Because at 30 feet, that sound is going to propagate and it's going to change from what you're hearing behind the kit. So I've talked about that in plenty of other videos, so I won't bore you with more of it. But anyway, comment below, subscribe, hit the bell if you want notifications, and keep an eye out for the next video. See you guys.